So welcome to the channel. I know it's been a long time since I recorded a video. I'm really sorry. Real life has got in the way, but we're back with an absolute banger of a video today. Uh, we've got Tim back with us in the studio, um, who is going to be doing a reaction video. No, we're not doing unboxings. No, we're not going to be sitting here with our faces making comical th f um, facial expressions as some video plays in the background. No, we're not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, although if they want to give us money, we'd be really grateful for that. What we're going to do here is an InfoSet reaction video where we're going to talk about some research that's recently come out that caught Tim's eye and then Tim chatted to me and went, ah, make an awesome video. And this is some research from Checkpoint uh, Research on the Xiaomi um, Android payment terminals. And we just want to give a bit of a reaction to what they found and, uh, well, and what Tim knows about the, uh, the payment terminals and what may or may not be going on. So. Let's get on with the video. So Tim, thank you for coming back in again. Really, really appreciate it making the, the trek up here. So we're going to talk today about this research from Checkpoint uh, about the Xiaomi payment terminals. What, well, tell me about it. What was the research and, and why is it so interesting? Yeah, thanks Quentin for having me. Uh, as, as, as you said, I just stumbled upon uh, Checkpoint research about uh, how they, their mobile security team hacked a point of sale, Android point of sale. And uh, initially I was like, wow, that's so great because big companies like Checkpoint, yeah, they start working around payment gadgets, payment devices. Mm. Yeah, and that's sort of like good, uh, good trend for me. But then when I read through that uh, report, I, I found a few very odd things. Mm. Yeah, let me tell you about that. So it's quite vague description of what they actually have done. All, all, all information that's available is that they were able to uh, get access to like sort of remote code execution within the trusted mm. environment execution. Yeah, so there's like a special module within within the Android phone and in point of sale, it's gonna be used for all encryption uh, purposes. Yeah, so right, when you will right. enter the pin code, it's gonna be used process there and then send over to the acquirer and initiation. Yeah, so this is like the core, the fundamental thing, which uh, being compromised obviously will cause a lot of problems. But uh, their description was so vague. They're like, uh, we can forge transactions. Yeah, any, any, any malicious actor can forge transactions by getting access to, uh, right. to the trusted uh, environment. Um, which made me think there are two possibilities. Two, 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 two things may happen here. First, obviously, checkpoint may not be willing to give away a lot of details, even mm. the vulnerabilities uh, fixed. Yeah, they no, I can like, understand that because these are quite popular, so they don't want to. Mess yeah, up. like like to give so many details no, to, exactly. to to criminals. But the second is what I thought. If I would be a a researcher who would like to understand the the benefit, the whole environment around the payment hacking. Uh, and what what this could lead to, that would be very misleading information because I would not get any any information uh, mm. from from that particular research. And I think that's that's the crucial part of a, every every research to not only to say, hey guys, we are checkpoint, <laughs> we we have done some amazing things. Yeah, go work with us or go pay to us to hack your devices. But it's also obviously to educate. Uh, people, whether they are within the infosec community mm. or whether they are completely outside of infosec yeah, community, yeah. like what are the problems, what are the risks? And yeah. this particular research completely missed missed that point. And this okay. is well, let's, let's what I want that. what I want to to explore. Yeah. So for these purposes, uh, this is basically what we made. Yeah. This is like a payment village uh, credit card. Yeah, and we made a payment village credit card uh, competition on. on so, what Depcon, type of card is this? Is on a... Depcon. This is double interface, so both contact and contactless. Yeah, yeah uh, dual interface, as it's called. And inside of it is basically the same application as Visa or Mastercard. Mm. Pretty much the same. I use the public uh, open source project, like yeah, yeah. simulating EMV. Yeah. All you need is just obviously to upload your private keys there, and they will uh, like, tweak a little bit around the 
code, uh, and that will give a simulation of the payment card for you and all you need after that is obviously you always needed a point of sale yeah and we mm. struggled with that over years i was looking at different models like well-known uh very phone mx model that was mm. compromised and played doom a couple of years ago like <laughs> five years ago yeah that uh, is the actual international standard for if you compromise something, if you run Doom, can you make it run Doom? Yeah, I mean, it's not fully compromised until it runs Doom. No, no, you uh, don't own a product until it runs Doom, to be fair. But the problem is that even if it runs Doom, it was not very suitable for, for our purposes. And, and last year, I just realized, okay, why do I bother with external devices like Android point of sales or like a Mac proprietary, where the, the, the top edge technology now is soft point of sale, which is basically That's an, on the Android, phone. an Android yeah. app installed on the phone, controlling your environment, but you can literally run it on every, every Android. This is basically what I want to talk about today is how you can actually, how criminals can benefit on using stolen cards yeah. without compromising trusted environment, without very sophisticated hacking techniques, just because of legacy that Visa and MasterCard uh, remained untouched for the last 50 years, I would say. It still still amazes me that I can buy a credit card these days that still has a mag stripe on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, at least with my Monzo in the app, it says it's disabled you and I need disabled. to turn it on yeah. specifically yeah. for visiting countries, like third world countries that like America that still require. Yeah, so um, uh, this strike. this is exactly the the one of the vulnerabilities that, that people were really able to successfully exploit mm. within the DEF CON competition, actually related to, to Max Stripe. Yeah, so uh, imagine 30, 40 years ago, mm. yeah, uh, you go to the cash desk, swipe the card, make make the transaction, yeah, but sorry, I'm laughing there because I actually can <laughs> imagine some of those time frames. But, but uh, and, and and then the the merchant sends the data to to the acquiring initiating mm. bank, saying, "Hey, this customer wanted to buy product for fifty pounds." Yeah, and that went into a special packet, into a special mm. field within within this packet. But then. 20 years ago, uh, EMV was invented, mm. yeah, and EMV, one of the main security feature for EMV obviously was to sign the exact amount that uh, the customer sees on, on, on a till and that, mm. and that, that, that's one of the main, the core fundamental Yeah, because in the old days when you used to have the, the what they call the, the zipping backwards yeah, and yeah, forwards, yeah. they could actually just write another number at the end. Yeah, yeah, so, and that was one of the main security mm. feature that the chip here, secures the deal, the yeah, transaction yeah. between you and the merchant, and be, by signing the exact price that the customer seen, yeah. and, and, and that's it. But what actually happens is that they didn't take this original field that was translated from Maxstripe era, yeah, and, 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 and used it uh, for signature. They added another amount field. Yeah, so what is happening with uh, chip cards and NFC mm. cards, amount field is passed twice. First, is it passed within the original uh, brackets where MaxStripe will, will pass yep. the information and, and the chip will pass the information. But second, is it will pass the amount that was exactly signed by, by the chip. So that uh, amount from that part will be extracted and checked within the issuing bank during the secure yeah. procedures, yeah. But the thing is that they don't need to be consistent. These two amount fields might be it absolutely can be totally different. different. And I can imagine of dozens of scenarios within which it's absolutely normal. You pay 0.0, .0 when you go uh, to the yeah, cube. Yeah. Yeah. You pay absolutely yeah, yeah. different price when you check into the hotel and yeah, then yeah. the charge yeah, when you go to the, the after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you need to pre-authorize the card to get fuel these days. But the thing is that yeah. if I would try to implement a secure method of handling that, I would like allow this for only certain groups of merchants. Mm. But the, we, what's happening now is that anyone can change, can, can send the request which says, hey, the chip signed one pound, 
but uh, I'm gonna charge Quentin 100 pounds. Yeah, and this is absolutely normal. And this is what I want to show you today. So we have one pound and the customer is absolutely sure that he will uh, be in, will be charged one pound and the card also will be sure that it will charge only one pound. This is exactly the information that goes. But in fact, with the very simple modifications, uh, we will try to charge the customer, let's say, five pounds. So you're actually now intercepting the data that's coming from the card. You're changing it on your computer, yeah. as we saw in previous videos, and now you're going to adjust it so that what actually gets charged is a different number. Yeah, but still, the you see the one pound here? Yeah. But five pounds, oops. Five pounds actually was charged, and uh, still, the bank uh, issuing bank will will decode all the information and will see that card signed only one pound. But mm. in fact, merchant says, "Hey, charge us five pounds," and this is okay. Let's do that. That was a really, really good uh, demonstration there. So what can we learn from this then? So what should manufacturers do differently to prevent this particular issue from occurring? It's a, the, the, the problem is that we live in a world where issuing and acquiring banks obviously not going to take any responsibilities. They will say, hey, we have payment industry mm. uh, standard that says us what to do. Yeah, and payment industry standards try to get away with things because they are like acquired by Visa or Mastercard. Yeah, and and uh, but there are certain groups of banks, very proactive banks, who do this red team card fraud simulations. Mm. Yeah, because they want to know what risks their cards, their customers, uh, their merchant owners actually have. So this is the only, I think, response these days is just to be a little bit more proactive yeah. if you really consider that as a threat. Yeah, and then be uh, in making, be, being proactive, being like a few steps ahead of your competitors will make you less potential victim because no one will care about you if there is much easier goals, slow hanging yeah, yeah, fruits yeah, yeah. Uh, nearby. Well, Tim, thank you for your taking the time to show us this. And I'm really, really glad that there's people like you highlighting these kind of issues. Uh, and hopefully, um, well, with enough knowledge, uh, we shine enough light on an issue, we can either get it fixed or mitigate the issues. So thank you, everybody. What did you think? Why don't you put your comments down below? If you're not subscribed, please drop a subscription now. I promise there will be more videos uh, uh, coming out soon. Um, until next time, have a great time and please don't have nightmares when you start paying for things with credit card.